Alright, so we just did this problem, and this one was different from the previous ones because we had a linear factor and an irreducible quadratic factor. So now let me write down an example. Now this example is a little harder because now we have a linear factor and we have two of the same irreducible quadratic factors. <laughs> but we can still do this one. You just have to see what the right guess is for what to divide it into. So I'm going to divide it into a over x, just like always. I'll have a linear factor over one of these, and then another linear factor over both at once. So this follows a similar pattern to the case where we had a double linear factor. So now we get a common denominator and add all of this together. I get this plus bx plus c times x x squared plus 1 plus dx plus e times x. All of this gets divided by x times x squared plus 1 squared. So now we need to add together everything on top. Let's see, the highest degree that appears here is x to the fourth. So if I expand this, I'll get an x to the fourth. Let me just expand it right here. I'll have a times x to the fourth. And over here, I have b x x x squared. So that's another x to the fourth. So I'll have a plus b x to the fourth. Now let's see if I have any x cubed terms. Over here I don't. Over here I have x x squared times c, and that's the only x cubed term. So it's just c x cubed. Do I have any x squared terms? Yes, I have 2a. I also have Let's see, I don't get any x squared terms here. But down here, I get dx squared. So I have plus d times x squared. Oops, I left out an x squared term. There should also be a bx squared. And then, like I said, the only linear term, the linear terms we have are c, x, and e, x. So we have c plus e times x. And the only constant term is just a. So that's all of the numerator. Let me erase this and then put it over the denominator. So in order for this to be true, we need a plus b to equal 1. We need c to equal 0. We need 2a plus b plus d to equal 0. I'm just matching up coefficients like before. And I need c plus e to equal 0. And finally I need a to equal 1. So we have five equations and five unknowns, but um, it's actually really easy. C is zero, so it doesn't apply here. So E is also equal to zero. Um, A is equal to one, so that says one plus B equals one, or B equals zero. So looking here, I have two 
times a is just 1 plus 0 plus d equals 0. So that says d is negative 2. So let's see, c is 0, a equals 1, b equals 0, d is negative 2, e is 0. So that tells us this is 1 over x plus bx plus c on top. Both b and c are 0, that term doesn't even appear. And then dx plus e, we just have minus 2x over this term. So this is now something real easy to integrate. Let's see, the first term is just natural log of x. The second term Uh, we can do a substitution. If I let u be x squared plus 1, I get du is 2x dx. And I already have a 2x dx sitting up there. So this is real nice. Let me pull the negative out. So 2x dx du, x squared plus 1 is u, so I have u squared so I have negative this is u to the negative 2, so I add 1 to the power and divide by that so I get a plus 1 over u plus c so substituting back in for u my final answer is natural log absolute value of x plus one over x squared plus one plus c.